I put my 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 slingshot on it first then I bring it down just three centimeters I let go guys the Indy don't fly by way now and then I aim fire What are going on wonderful people? Hey yeah, man, welcome back to the channel guys. This video um, has been requested for so long now. But I'm gonna finally do I'm just gonna do it kinda brief, but at the same time I'm just gonna cover some necessary um, parts of it. Now it's all about these kind of slingshot guys. Now I have a lot of subscribers that hit me up and wondering how to use the slingshots best way to use them some of my friends are also so I'm just gonna do like a little briefing on the slingshot from when you purchase the slingshot how you assemble the slingshot and stuff like that I have a, a, a previous video on it already but I'm just gonna do like a little bit more alright so um, first to start off with guys when you purchase a slingshot you have a thing that you call um, band size now band size meaning this means how thick the bands are so I have I have a whole lot of bands inside here guys now this is a 1.5 millimeter band now if you notice if you look at it closely you can see that it's thick i'm not talking the the, the um the broadness or the width of the band guys well it would be the, the the width of the band either way but on the smaller side so not on this side but on this side all right this is the part that you look down when you stretch the band and you're gonna fire this is the part that you look down now this is thicker than this as you can see and it's also thicker than this or this would kind of be like almost the same but yeah you get the drift let me find us a, a thinner one the one that I have in this slingshot guys it, this slingshot is Mickey's slingshot but it's thinner so look at it it's way thinner guys now you start from the, the size of the band now what I realize is this the thicker you go with the band the less accurate you will be meaning if you, if you draw the band like this, the, 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 the hand that the fork is, is in, it's going to be like all kind of wobbly and trimbly because the band is thick. So you're going to have more, more problem holding on to the tension of the band. So try to get my sweet spot when it comes on to the, the, the slingshot bands, guys. It's between 7 and 6, depending on the kind of slingshot or the company that the slingshot is is made from so you have like slingshot being made from simple shots and some Chinese versions and so on so you just have to find your your um, your preference now the width of the band or you, you can say the taper of the band taper meaning this let, let me show you again now this is another thing so there's a whole other things to this guys but I'm just gonna just kind of briefly go over everything taper of the band meaning like the part where you attach the, the band to the fork and the part where you attach the band to the pouch now the taper down here if you notice this when you purchase the slingshot the the bands they come like this like you'd have like 20 centimeters at the bottom and like say 10 centimeters at the top because the band these bands were built to to shoot only in the slingshots where when you stretch it there's a lot of power down here and less power up here so the, the tongue or we call it basil in, in a Jamaica but the pouch retracts faster plenty of persons don't know this the faster the, the shot or the ammo goes it's the more power it has plenty of people don't know that they think that 
if the band is stiff it means that you're going to have more power no you're wrong that's only just going to give you more drag so the first time i brought the slingshot out and i was going to go hunting with it for the first time i didn't know much about it but over time i've done my research and i've tested things for myself and so on so i can tell you a whole lot more about these armbands so you would have like a whole lot of persons laughing at me with this and like saying to me that why i mean no way i go go shoot you can't shoot birds with that it's too thin it's this it's that um that i should lend them the slingshot and let them test it and they would take the slingshot from me and they would be like stretching it and they're saying yo i saw the band soft man meaning that are jump for the jamaicans but they're saying that the band the, the bands they're soft meaning that they don't have as much power but they're so wrong they couldn't be more wrong all right now after you have your taper which is the width you have some slingshots that they take a broader taper or a wider taper and the tongues they're not big or the the the, the, the pouch they're not big they're small the, the bigger the tongue the bigger the ammo meaning you could use like a 10 millimeter ammo or a or a 11 millimeter ammo or so on now i'm gonna show you something when it comes down to the ammo size guys this is another thing that you guys need to know if you're using a if you're using a say six millimeter and when i say six millimeter i mean the thickness of the band if you're using a six millimeter with a eight mil ammo and you're shooting with it it's gonna it's gonna um it's gonna shoot different from if you use a 9 mil ammo so say for instance at 10 yards the 8 millimeter ammo would would fly um, like it would go say say it would go like an inch up when you shoot it the, 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 the 9 millimeter ammo might fall it depends so you'll have to try the ammos try your 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 band length and all of that to determine um, what you're gonna do now if you're gonna practice like say for instance you just purchased the slingshot you know your stance you know the band size you want to use you know the ammo size you want to use and you're gonna shoot now um, there's so much things to this guys when you're purchasing the armbands online you have like zero point then you have the number so it'd be like 0 0.5 0 0.6 that's the size of the, the, the ammos when it comes down to the armbands, that's the same thing you will see. Like you will see like zero point. Now, if you if you see anything over ten, say for instance the, there's a one, and then you have anything behind the one, that means that band is thick. Anything above one is thick. You have to have a zero before, then you have a point, then you have the number behind it. So that would be like um, the right bands to use. Now you don't want to go too soft because then the shot is not going to be critical to the animal. You want something that's, that's powerful but at the same time soft enough so you can get a good aim. Because the stiffer the bands, the, the more your hand will like trying to keep up with the power of it. So you're going to be like all trembly. And you just need to be off just you just need to shift like just a millimeter or even a centimeter you just need to shift just a centimeter to the left and the further the distance is from you you'll go like one inch two inch three inch off target the closer you, the, the target is to you the less you will miss so say for instance um I'll, I'll come back to that in a little bit but just to let you you guys know the differences between the the ammo and the bands so if you're if you're gonna be shooting like eight mil eight mil band size get used to and you get used to eight mil eight mil ammo make sure you can you can you constantly use that band setup if you try to change the shot is gonna be different everything is gonna be different so you have to get used to a certain type of band size a certain time type of ammo and you'll be consistent with your shots now um 
there's a thing you call bond length so when you purchase the bonds or you purchase the, uh, the, the, the slingshot they're gonna be coming with some some um, pre-made band set already so they'll have the pouch and everything all tied up for you now if you notice this band set is longer than mine you notice hold on let me put on this one it's longer than mine see what's happening right there yeah now you need my jaw length is six inches now i'm gonna show you how i get that to get to know what my jaw length is let me explain it to you what i mean by that is you're gonna have your slingshot fork inside your hand and then you're gonna take a tape measure you know that the tape measure they have like a little lip on the tape measure you could just hook it onto your slingshot and when you when you draw and before i even go to this part let me be clear you have to have an anchor point meaning that's where your hand is going to come to your face every single shot that you make and you're going to have to have a reference point meaning that's where you're going to aim on or from to your target you see that little that little nub on the guns or the sight that's on the gun most people call it a sight the sight that's on the gun that's that that's is the reference point now you're gonna have the same thing on the slingshot some of them come with with reference points like like they have aims and stuff on it i don't use the aim because when when the when you pull the armband back and you let you release it it tends to worn out the rubber that's on here so i don't use the sight and then the sight is only so useful at a certain distance and so on so i try to mentally do this so it would be like muscle memory and everything um back to the band length now so after you have your anchor point that's anchor is where you anchor your 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 pouch hand that is the anchor just remember that's anchor you guys can also watch other videos on this as well so you anchor some people they will draw first and then anchor i anchor first and then i draw my anchor point is right where nikki does the same thing too but when nikki when nikki anchors nikki anchors then draw then come up that's how she feels comfortable doing it for me i just anchor and just put it towards the target now when you anchor you're gonna put the tape measure on the slingshot to get the band length you're gonna put the tape measure on the slingshot you draw it and wheresoever you feel comfortable anchoring on your face that will be your band length so say for instance it's like 30 inches my jaw length when when i put it on the the slingshot and draw back my anchor the length of it is 30 inches on the tape measure you're gonna divide that because this is another thing the sweet spot between a, a, a draw length and a slingshot is like five or four times its relaxed state so if the band is like this it is at relaxed state so it is only like one or zero so it's zero but when i draw to my anchor point it's like five times it's it's um relaxed state so you understand what i'm saying now you're gonna divide that 30 that i got from my my draw length by five and i get six that means the band length should be six inches that's my band length it's gonna be different for you now i'm gonna show you something where the ruler is now this is what i mean guys if you notice on here i don't know if the camera can focus in on it properly as you can see this is one inch two inch three inch four inch five inch six inches so you see right where the tongue right where the the pouch is being tied that's where the six inches come in not to the pouch just the band itself just the band itself and you know you're gonna when you're cutting the band so say for instance it's six inches for me i'm just gonna do like say six and quarter inch because you have to have some inside here 
and also where you tie here but I normally tie here first and then I just put then I cut it at six and quarter so the quarter would be like inside the, the, the slingshot itself yeah so I have the, the, the relaxed six inches from here to here so that's my draw length as I said before put the tape measure on you make sure you have an anchor point on your face if you shoot butterfly fine you, you, if your, your jaw length would be like about here if you're shooting butterfly style so you're going to measure that your jaw length and then you're going to divide that by five so it would be longer but when you stretch it you get as much power out of the, the, the slingshot bands now for most people they think that the slingshots are useless or are not good or they are not straight let me explain something to you guys now Many people would think that a gun is more accurate than a slingshot. I would say just a little bit. Just like a gun would be like a hundred percent and a slingshot would be like ninety-nine percent. Meaning, reason be the, the bullet is coming out of a barrel and that barrel is the same way all the time. But this is where the gun Falters. You see that recoil that the gun makes? It depends on the shooter now to hold it steady. But the slingshot doesn't have any recoil. So the slingshot makes up for that by being so steady where if you constantly draw back to the same spot where your anchor, your anchor point is and you just release. You don't move your hand. You don't release like move, move your hand like this or like this or like this. Just keep it right where it is. And just make that easy release just just release the, the the pouch just release the pouch the shot is gonna fly in the same exact spot every time unless the distance is different that is the only time so I just want to make it clear again you have the band tapers which is how broad the band is at the bottom and at the top where the pouch is now i would have to get into that at different time i'm just trying to make sure you guys know that purchase the slingshots and like asking me some questions about the slingshot how to get started to practice how to get started and practicing the right way if you have clay ammos get rid of the clay ammos they are no good you don't want to be shooting the clay and then when you shoot the lead it's the weight is different so the shot is going to be when you when for instance at 10 yards you your anchor point will allow you to hit a target at 10 yards about say 10 centimeters above your your slingshot your fork when when you use the 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 the, the steel ammo now it would drop like say three did i say lead did i say lead at first yes yeah, say you're using lead and it will be 10 and you're using steel now it's gonna be different at the same distance if you're using clay it's gonna be different at the same distance so practice with the ammo that you're gonna actually be using in a in a in a hunt that is so you'll be like a drop box where you can retrieve back your your steel because i know it will be expensive to lose all those ammo but you you build like a drop box so when you fire you can retrieve back the, the shot so you don't lose any money until you're a professional where when you're warming up you can just make like say five consecutive shots at something in the distance and then you just go hunting just like warming up a bit before you go on a hunt because it's good to warm up before you go on a hunt for me most times i don't do that i just go out and it's like muscle memory because i could shoot instinctively me and mickey we both could um we both can do that i can just shoot instinctively like this and this is instinctive shooting yeah you do have somewhat amount of aim and everything when i do when i when i shoot like this i i used to shoot like this guys i have somewhat much aim but most of it is muscle memory we call that instinctive shooting now it can never be as accurate as how i shoot now so if you notice in my past or previous videos way back down when i just started youtube i used to to slaughter the birds with with the instinctive shooting because my muscle memory is good i, I was born with it basically i was i'm shooting um birds from i was a, a little toddler basically all right
um but for for plenty of the other folks that you know you like to see the slingshot and stuff if you can shoot this kind of slingshot properly the guys that use the gun they have nothing on you and i'm telling you this as a fact this is something that i know this is facts they can't because when they fire after the birds they fire um pebbles so they don't necessarily have to aim at the birds properly but that's only if the birds fly over that's why they have to bait the area but when you go inside the bush and there's a bird perch about 10 yards from you 15 yards once you master this if you do miss if you, if you go inside the bush and you see like 30 birds on your way in you're coming out back with at least 25 i have to monitor myself when it comes on to shooting some of the times i don't shoot the birds um being that if i get like say five birds i know that that can just do for one 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 sitting or one meal i know i have the skills so i don't have to go hard it's the same thing with mickey mickey will shoot a bird in in a dollar kind um diameter meaning there was this one time when i sh i shot after a bird inside some you know, branches really thick branches and there was this dollar kind space that the shot should have went through but i couldn't make the shot and mickey took the slingshot from me my slingshot and put the shot through a diameter of a dollar kind and hit the bird in the head and from there i realized she was a great great shot now it's easier for females because their heart rate um is not that hard as us males so they're more steady so don't underestimate females when it comes on to shooting i used to but being with mickey i realized a lot and then i started doing research and then um i have to give thanks to nick because nick told me this and i didn't really you know but then after seeing mickey mickey's performance and everything it's proven all right okay guys so what i'm gonna do now i don't want to draw out this video too long so i'm gonna get to the shooting part but before i get up i'm gonna show you um how to really draw back the slingshot and what it looks like in my eye to the target so i'm gonna try to set the phone camera up so you can see what it looks like in my eyesight all right so where's the where's the ammo it's easier to use it with the ammo like this so let me put the ammo inside so this is a five mil see how small it is comparing to the 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 um the 9.5 and an 8 mil is right in between this size now i realize if you use a 9.5 and you use the same band set because this band set that i have on this slingshot guys it's about six mm six millimeter but yet if i use the same six millimeter to shoot a five a five 0.5 or a 5 mil it's gonna hit the bird it's gonna fire different my beat fires a little bit lower a little bit higher not sure because i only use a 9.5 um it's gonna hit the bird if if i dial in on this it hit the, hits the bird but the bird will fly away now if i use a 8 mil it's gonna have more stopping power but i use a 9.5 and it has great stopping power all right but all the ammo shoot different so you find it you find the, the, the ammo for your liking and you constantly use that ammo you constantly use the same band size all right because then it's gonna throw you off and you're not gonna know what you're doing basically you're gonna be thinking that it's you but yeah it's you but you're actually doing it not deliberately you're doing you're actually you guys understand what i'm saying because i'm rambling now because there's so much information in my head okay um so let me show you something you see whenever you put the oh this is another thing i should cover with you guys too when you when you first get the, the bands the bands are going to be like this and you're supposed to put them in the slingshot now there's a diff there's a thing that you guys should never do never put the slingshot in the in the in the in the fork like this and you see this part that comes that is here if you put it on the inside it's gonna obstruct when the ammo is coming out of the pouch and you're gonna be missing a lot like left right up down and it's not gonna be fun 
So all you need to do is this part of the, 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 the slingshot should be on the outside. Alright? So whenever you get the slingshots or the slingshot bands like this, this part that has this little lip on it, where they tie the slingshot up, this part should always be on the outside. So when you put the ammo inside here and you pinch, you pinch, this is what it should look like. It should look like when you pull, when the ammo comes out, it has nothing to obstruct it. Now, if you put this on the inside, when the ammo is coming out, it's going to either hit the right or the left, either side, and the, the shot is going to divert to a little, um, a little different than it would normally do. So, you don't want that because that's going to throw you off target and you're not going to be hitting your prey. And it's going to be so frustrating, believe me. Okay, another thing when you purchase these slingshots as well, when you put the band set inside of the slingshot, you see this part where we have the, 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 the knob where you can screw out and put the slingshot bands in? This part should be facing away from you. If you notice on this side it's really smooth. And this side it's like it has that, that, cut, that cutting edge. This will, if you turn it this way it will actually cut your bands when they are coming back. That is why this side is so smooth. So this side should be facing away from you okay next thing that you guys should know about the pouch if you notice most of the pouch they have the pouches they have this small hole on the inside or they have it like this now you should make sure the ammo goes right here right inside that hole right inside that hole it should be okay so when you put the ammo in the pouch like this it goes right in there it's even now when I hold the pouch like this, do not draw back one side of the pouch so it looks like this. It should be even like that. Now you pinch a pouch, you pinch an ammo. You don't snug up to it like hold it up like in your hand because when you're releasing it's gonna might be bump over your fingers or something and then the shot is gonna fly off somewhere else. You don't need that. So all you need to do is just pinch like this. My anchor point, as I as I was gonna tell you guys earlier, my anchor point is right in in my jaw corner, right where my top my top jaw meets my bottom jaw, right where it joins. That's where I put my knuckle of my big finger. That's where I put it, right in that in that spot. So each time I draw, it's it's like I'm imitating a gun barrel. So it's each time I draw, I put it right in there. So it's stuck snugly right inside my, my, my jaw corner. Okay. Now, how it's supposed to be on the front of it now, I'm gonna show you guys. Now, when you draw back the slingshot like this, try to make sure that the band set is even. So you're supposed to be, you, if you notice right here, it's two, it's two side to the, to the, the slingshot. You have the bottom fork and the top fork, meaning that because we're shooting like gangster style. But when I do it like this, on my side, when I when I close, this is another thing you guys need to know. Okay, that is why I say there's so much information for this, but just try to to take what I'm saying into consideration and just try to pick out the most important parts out of it. And all, well, all the parts are important, so try to do everything yeah so you can go back over and watch the video over and over again okay so when you draw like this try to make sure that the band is in line with each other so i'm going to show you on your end what it should look like when you when you when you aim and if you aim on your right side because i aim on my left side if you notice the fork is in my left hand some people the fork will be in their right hand the the, the eye that is closer to the band you're gonna close no you're gonna close the opposite eye the, the, the hold on hold on yeah so the, the eye that is closer to the band my bad the eye that is closer to the band that's the eye you're gonna open i know most people their their eyes are like dominant one eye is dominant than the other 
just train the eye just close the one that's that's not dominant and close the one that is dominant and it will work out eventually so don't worry about it, 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 it over time your body gets used to it so it's as easy and as simple as that so don't worry if you if you're right eye eyed or left eyed it doesn't matter all right now when when i when you stretch the band like this and you close the one that's further from the band you're gonna be looking straight down the band line and then that's where it looks like a gun barrel you're looking when you aim a gun you're actually looking on top of the barrel like this that's what it's gonna look like on the slingshot as well only thing you know that it's a band and stuff like that so I'm gonna show you in your eyesight what it will look like what it should look like now if I stretch the armband like this when I stretch the armband like this guys hold on let me see yeah that's what it should look like if you twist it like this nah if you twist it like that nah if you twist it like this nah you need to make sure it's lined up like that so you're seeing only one band all right that's what it should look like now say for instance that leaf the leaf right here that's where i want to hit if i put it there because my 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 reference point on my slingshot is about 10 meet say uh say three centimeters off the top of my fork so say for instance i want to hit this leaf right here the bottom leaf right there i will have to aim at it, the leaf then bring it down about three centimeters and then let go the shot and it will just hit the leaf so i don't know if i explained that as good as i should but hopefully you guys understand what i'm saying and just try to do it because everyone's reference point and anchor point is going to be different my anchor point is here mickey's anchor point i think is somewhere she she used her her hand like right here and kind of brace it against her her cheek and so i would say her anchor point would be somewhere in her mouth line right here so each time she brings it back and what i would advise for you guys to do move the slingshot from your face just 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 relax and just take your hand and just put it somewhere on your face wherever you you naturally draw and put it to each time that's where your anchor point would be for you so you try to make sure when you draw you use somewhere on your hand and on your face some people they will put it like in the corner of their mouth and like get an anchor point like right there for me it's my knuckle in in my jaw corner so anchor point reference point now i'm gonna go to the reference point okay so this video is well over might be half an hour by now guys just explaining certain things to you guys now you know about anchor point reference point band draw length which is important please make sure you get your draw length down pack try not to go over one mil band set band size because that would be too stiff and then your hand is gonna be like all nervous so you're not gonna get that accurate release you need something for you to 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 um it's soft but at the same time critical now when you're gonna place a shot you need to make sure you're 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 parallel to the to the target i think it's parallel yeah i think it's parallel i think the right term for it is parallel not sure guys not in the book so much again as i was a young kid you know what i'm saying man, man a big man i know you know yeah so so guys but you guys understand what i'm saying so say for instance the target is there you can't set like this you can't be like this to the target you have to make sure your body is aligned with the target like this so jamaicans would say you set sideways so you're gonna set sidewards towards the target so my i always put my my anchor point up first and then i draw towards the target so i would normally be looking at the target though and then i draw aim boom and that's it okay so remember make sure you got your stance right stance 
set parallel to the target I believe parallel I think that's the right term yeah set like this your anchor point your reference point everything you aim at the target this is the right way because if you set like this it's gonna throw you off whether to the left or to the right you need to be in line with it now you guys can check out this video that's on the screen to show you how accurate I am with a slingshot so just check out this video right now you could always come back to this video later if you want to or or what so check out the video that's on the screen right now and you'll see how accurate I am normally when I do a link up with subscribers or other youtubers if you notice our channel name is Mickey and stretch fun times meaning we just want to have fun in every bad situation we just want to have fun Life is hard, yeah, and so on, but we just want to have fun. We want to bring back some of the childhood days and stuff like that. That's why we, we, we started this channel. Alright, so, say for instance, when me, and, when, we, when me and Mickey were both in the bush or wherever we are, and we're shooting at game or whatever, we get serious sometimes where we're deadly accurate. But whenever we link with other people, we just want to have fun with them. So we are not all that accurate or at our best sometimes because when, when how would I say this now for, for us? When it's time for us to get serious when it comes down to hunting, we're really serious. I can be as accurate as hitting a dollar kind or, or hit a bird, bird's eye out with just one shot. No miss, no nothing. If the bird doesn't move, it's dead right there and then. Sometimes I do will miscalculate my shots are always straightforward, so whether I miss the, the target upward or down because this is another good thing about the band. Whenever you stretch the band like this, let me show you guys something. Whenever you stretch the band like this and it's in one line, I can only miss, miss either up or down because of distance. But I can never miss like side to side because you see that line that's in the band? That's the line that I follow through. So say for instance I want to aim at that right in front the slingshot right there. If you notice the line is right there. So I can only either miss down or above it. But never to the sides. If you're missing to the sides that means something is not right. Your release is not clean. If you're just a beginner and each shot that you take you're, miss, you're missing to the left. That is a good thing or you're missing to the right that is a good thing or you're missing up that is a good thing or you're missing down consecutive or in the same spot every single time or around the same spot every time that is a good thing meaning all you need to do is just to adjust your hand and then that adjustment that you make that is your aiming or, or reference point then so that will be good so guys as I was saying before um, if you miss one millimeter to the left the further from you the target is you're gonna miss you're gonna miss like say at 10 yards if you miss one millimeter if, if the, the slingshot vibrates just one millimeter to the left I'm just gonna use that as an example at 10 yards you'd miss like half a quarter inch at 15 yards to at 15 to 20 yards you'd miss like about an inch at uh, about 30 yards it would be like an inch and a half to two inch so the, so you don't want to be using a band set that is too stiff because your hand is going to be vibrating too much so that's what i meant that um try to use a softer band set with your with your draw length so you'll get the power from the slingshot but at the same time your hand can be as steady as possible and remember you know guys if you can get strictly headshots it's a it's a, it's a good thing that means you're great i could do a hunt and just do strictly headshots but most of the times the birds they will be like looking at you and be like moving so most of the times i try to get a cross shot or, or a chest shot but most of the times for me it's a cross shot or a head shot and as i said before check out the video and you'll see how accurate i am all right 
also guys um distance you you will have to adjust yourself at different distance so say for instance if at 15 yards my 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 i'm gonna put the target just three centimeters above my fork if the target is further from me how it works for me i put it down a centimeter so at 20 yards i would put it down just a centimeter closer to the fork and if it's uh, if it's about 30 35 yards i would put it directly on the tip of the fork and that's where I would the, the, the aim in the um, the reference point would be. So for me, because it's gonna be different for everyone. Because I used to use the one mil bands, and my reference point used to be different. But you know I'm skilled and stuff, and I understand how it works. But for a person that don't know how it works, they're gonna be confused. So I'm trying to explain it to you guys. Um. So say for instance it's like this look what i'm saying i'm gonna do it in your eye say what could i aim at mm. let me let me see in 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 where you could hold on guys Okay guys, so that's the can, right? When I draw like this, say I want to hit the, 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 the top of the can, which is the blue part. I put my, my, my slingshot on it first, then I bring it down just 3 centimeters, I let go. It would hit the can in the blue part, in the cover. But, say for instance, I and this is at 15 10 15 yards or so say for instance um the the target we're just we're just um pretending now say for instance the target is at 30 yards for me instead of making and i want to hit the blue part of the can i'm not going to aim the same three centimeters below i'm going to put the tip of the fork directly on it because i'm going to bring it up okay so the further the distance for me, the target comes down on my fork. The closer the distance is to me, I have to float the target above my fork. Hope you guys understand what I'm saying. Alright? Yeah man. If there's anything that I that you guys need to know or would want to find out, you could still comment it. I'll answer the question in the comment section or do another video. Or you guys can can comment in the comment section. Let me know what you'd want me to do a video on. Pertaining to the slingshots. Alright. Now, I'm going to put this target out about 10 yards. And then come back. And do just... Oh, uh, I don't have anything to tie it up with. So each time I, sh I shoot it, I'm going to have to go back to, to take it up. But at least one shot. I'm just going to do one shot then. Because this video is going on for too long guys. 10 yards. Okay guys, so this is actually 15 yards. Thought it would be 10, but it's more. So, just to show you how good I am. Now, it goes right in the, the hole of the slingshot. In, of, the, of the tongue. Jamaican call it basil. Yeah, right in there. You set it like this, make sure it's even, the tongue is even. Now, as I said before, I put it to, put my anchor point first, and then I look at the target, I stretch, and then I aim, fire. I don't know if you guys can hear the, 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 the stuff get hit. <laughs> the cat <laughs> okay guys so this is it this is where the steel hit it if it had impact right here it would have might be went inside of the container but 
when I was aiming to hit here, I had to put the slingshot about here on the target from my sight and the shot went here all right so that's it mangoose you know mangoose i'm going bad guys i'm gonna have to get rid of some of these mangoose there's a whole lot here and man they've eaten some eggs for me and stuff i think i'm not gonna even get into the bird them you know guys because the mangoose them all climb all the tree them too you know so i'm gonna have to do a mangoose a little pest control one of these days yeah but um hopefully this video was helpful to you guys and stuff um if as i said if i if i've left out anything and you want to know something because i even know how to cut the bands i have videos on that as well when i cut the bands in previous videos so just go on the channel um dashboard guys check out the videos you you guys will learn so much from the videos all right so with no further ado like comment share subscribe until the next adventure i want to say peace out to you guys yes <laughs>